Today's organization IT systems exist in a highly interconnected ecosystem. Furthermore, it is becoming increasingly common for employees to work from home. Allowing remote access to the company's systems may have security issues. The remote connection will invariably add the employee's home system to the organization's comprehensive attack surface. In order to properly analyze any InfoSec issues associated with employees working from home, the organization needs to include a smart home threat model within its overall infrastructure threat model. The easiest and most effective way to do this is with Threat Modeler 5.0. The threat model we want to create will be for a basic smart home security system but will also have room for expansion if necessary. The basic smart home security system has smart entry locks that monitor who enters, provides keyless passage, and may have other convenient features. We also want to include sensors for the windows and any other areas for which the homeowners want to monitor access. For our threat model, we should assume all products are wireless to include aftermarket or do-it-yourself installations. The smart home system should also be accessible through mobile devices via an application. After conducting a brief product research, I created the following requirements and specification sheet. As part of the smart home proper, we need a central controller or gateway. The most general products support a variety of protocols to communicate with specific devices, including Z-Wave, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, or Bluetooth. The door locks with the best reviews are Bluetooth enabled. Intrusion sensors with the best reviews are Zigbee enabled. The home also needs a wireless internet router to allow the gateway access to the internet. And of course, the router needs to connect with the internet, most likely through a cable modem. Our threat model also needs to account for components which, though not part of the smart home proper, are necessary for the smart home's functionality. The gateway will have a backup communication system to a cell tower in case the power or internet connection is disrupted. Users will want remote access to the smart devices through an application which will most likely be hosted in the cloud. And of course, we need users who are interacting with the app and thereby controlling the smart home devices. Threat Modeler first opens with a dashboard screen where users can get a quick overview of the threats, their risk ratings, their statuses, and the top 10 threats identified for the threat models to which the user has access. To create a new threat model, we first navigate to the threat model screen. Here we see a listing of the individual threat models which were summarized on the dashboard screen. For each threat model, we can see a graph of identified threat status versus risk rating and a list of open tasks related to the highlighted threat model. Click the Add button to open the new threat model dialog box. Note the name and version fields are highlighted, indicating that these are required fields. Besides name and version, Threat Modeler allows users to indicate the type of threat model being created. Since this is to be a smart home threat model, we will choose Other. Users can also provide additional information for the threat model. Labels are used for threat model searches. The risk rating helps communicate the criticality of the application or system being threat modeled. Threat Modeler uses a convenient 5-point rating scale, from very high to very low. Organizations are free to assign these values based on their own risk schema. Users can also indicate whether this threat model is for internal application or is public-facing. Threat Modeler provides four ways to create new threat models. The wizard takes users through a short series of questions and then automatically builds the basic threat model based on the responses. The basic threat model can then be modified as users see fit. Import allows users to create threat model process flow diagrams from an existing Visio diagram. Template creates a new threat model based on diagrams previously saved to the template library. Templates can be reused as often as needed and are a great way to increase the team's threat modeling efficiency. Empty starts the new threat model with a blank diagramming canvas. With Empty highlighted, Threat Modeler lists the 10 most recently modified threat models, so users can quickly return to previous work. A great feature for fast-paced DevOps teams working in a CI-CD production environment. For this video, we will illustrate creating our threat model from empty. What opens next is a Threat Modeler diagramming screen. The main areas of this screen include the canvas, where we will create our Threat Model Process Flow Diagram, the Toolbox, 
which contains all the architectural components with which we build a diagram. Components are represented by a variety of icons. These are reusable elements created by subject matter experts and saved in the Threat Modeler Threat Framework. And the Information Pane, where we can view general information about each component on the canvas, add additional properties to the component, look at the threats associated with the component, and much more. Since there are many components stored in the toolbox, we can easily find the one we need by typing its name into the search bar. Threat Modeler's intelligent search engine begins filtering for your component as you type. When you find the component you need, just click on it and drag it onto the canvas. If at any time you want to move its location, click on the component's name and drag it to the new location. We've already included the smart locks from our requirements sheet. Let's add the other items for the smart home proper. We need a gateway that will serve as our smart device controller. We need intrusion sensors. We also need a router. And we'll need a cable modem. Since our smart home is being designed for expandability, let's add a few more smart devices. With these items on the canvas, we have all the essential components needed inside our home. Let's gather them into a special group called a container. First, simply draw a box on all the components to select them. Second, click the Group button in the Diagramming Toolbar. The default group is called a collection. We can change the group type by right-clicking on the group. This opens a pop-up menu. In the menu, we see options for two other group types in Threat Modeler. Trust boundaries are used to designate that the group contents are logically placed behind one or more compensating security controls. The other group type is container, which is what we want. Containers are special types of group because they are defined as a component in the Threat Modeler. Any component found in the toolbox may be used as the defining component for a container group. In this way, Threat Modeler allows users to visually illustrate that one or more architectural elements reside inside another element. Just like the keyboard, the disk drive, communication ports, and various software applications reside inside your computer. Since we want to communicate that the components placed on the canvas reside in a smart home, we'll choose the integrated smart home service platform as our defining component. We can do this by typing integrated into the component field. Threat Modeler's intelligent search engine automatically starts filtering for our component as we type. We also need to add those requirements that are not part of the smart home proper. A cell tower, the app, more on this in a second, the users, our users will have the ability to connect to the smart home app either through their computer or through their smart devices. So let's add those to the canvas. Note, we could add a general component from the toolbox representing a computer. However, to illustrate the power of Threat Modeler's architecturally-based process flow diagrams, we will instead add a standalone Threat Model, one that was created for endpoint security, and use this to represent our user's computer. This is an example of Threat Model nesting, or chaining. It allows the work done on a separate Threat Model to be inserted and used in the current Threat Model. The nested Threat Model threats can be imported into the current Threat Model's outputs simply by telling Threat Modeler to import threats. With Threat Modeler nesting, organizations can develop a detailed understanding of the comprehensive attack surface big picture, including threats that arise from application interactions, third-party system integrations, and shared components. Our smart device will also communicate with the cell tower. Though not overtly necessary, we can show that the cell tower communicates with a telecom network before the users reach the smart home application. We will therefore nest a telecom network threat model. Since placement of this element is not overtly necessary, we will not import the threats at this time. Coming back to our application, we want to show that it is running in the cloud. We can do this by creating a container for the app. Select the app feature, click group on the diagramming toolbar, change the group type to container, since Amazon Web Services is a likely cloud provider for such a service, let's make this an AWS container. If we like, we can also represent our organization's IT system with the Windows Server within a machine trust boundary. To create the machine trust boundary, create a group around the server, change the group type to container, 
In the container dialog box, start typing trust into the container field. Select machine trust boundary. We can change the name of the group by double clicking on the group name and typing in the new text. This configuration of server and trust boundary do not introduce new threats or security requirements into the threat model. They are only for illustrative purposes to communicate that our smart home is a source of potential threats for the organization's IT system. Now that all the components are added to the canvas, the next step is to include the various communication protocols between them. Click on a component icon and drag an arrow to another icon. A communication protocol link is added. The default protocol is HTTPS. We can change this by right-clicking on the communication link to open the menu of all protocols available to the canvas. On our requirements sheet, we said that the smart locks are communicating via Bluetooth. Let's check that option. Immediately, the communication link is changed to red and indicates multiple protocols. Since we only want the Bluetooth protocol in this link, we just scroll to the default HTTPS item and uncheck it. You can see the communication protocol between the door lock and the gateway is now set to Bluetooth. Let's set the intrusion sensor communication link using the same steps. Remember, it communicates via the Zigbee protocol. We will also create a Wi-Fi link between the gateway and the router, and we need a communication link between the modem and the router. This will be TCP. We need to represent the backup communication between the gateway and the cell tower. This will most likely be via the 3G protocol. We can add other communication protocols for our other smart devices. Users will physically communicate with computer or smart devices. So let's set those communication links to general. The computer will communicate with app via HTTPS. The smart devices will communicate with the cell tower via 3G. And from there, the communications will be HTTPS. Users working from home will connect to the organization's IT system via HTTPS. The last step to creating your smart home threat model is to add additional properties to specific components. In this threat model, we only need to add components for the app and the cloud. Highlight the app component. In the information pane, select General View. Click the Add button and choose Widget. Widgets are the various means by which applications obtain and maintain state. Our application will undoubtedly have a login feature which will require users to enter their credentials on an HTML form that communicates with a backend database. Thus, in the widget field, start typing form. In the backend field, select database. The app's login feature may also place a cookie on the user's computer and change the session ID. In the widget field, start typing cookie and select it when it appears. Do the same for session. Since these do not communicate with the backend, leave the backend field blank. The application may also handle certain data types. Certainly, the login feature will require username and password. And since this is a smart home app, it will obtain our current location and the home address. It may also send notifications to the user via email. To our AWS cloud container, we can add specific AWS components. We can add these from the information pane, just like we added widgets and data elements for the app. As an AWS technology partner, Threat Modeler comes out of the box with the entire AWS component library and their associated threats and security requirements. For our cloud deployment, we'll need to have an AWS API Gateway, an AWS RDS, and S3. We'll utilize Lambda functions, and we'll have an AWS VPN Gateway. Our threat model is now complete. Navigating to the overview page, we can quickly see that threat model has identified 64 potential threats. By default, we see the threats grouped by source, so we can see at a glance that five threats are coming from our app, seven threats arise because of the Z-Wave communication protocol, and so forth. 
Users can change the grouping at any time simply by dragging a column header to the grouping bar or by clicking the X to remove a grouping. Click on Caret opens the line items within that group. Identified threads can be sorted by column header by double clicking the header. They can be filtered by any combination of column header by clicking the filter icon in the column header. By clicking the more items icon, we can also view on screen additional items of interest. For example, we can see that in addition to the 64 potential threats, Threat Modeler has also identified 48 security requirements and 12 test cases. We can generate a detailed threat report by clicking the Report tab above the Diagramming Toolbar. The default report displays all the information which Threat Modeler's Intelligent Threat Engine automatically gleaned from our Processful Diagram. Users can filter the items displayed on the report by clicking the Filter icon. Users can choose to include or exclude any of the Threat Model outputs. Users can also choose to create a report specifically designed for developers or for executives. Once the desired outputs are selected, click Filter to update the report. The threat report can be downloaded in PDF form by clicking the PDF icon. The threat report for this threat model is available on the Threat Modeler website. It took me a non-security expert, about 15 minutes to create this smart home threat model. Thank you for watching.